Good afternoon and welcome to the Entertainment News with Enrico Alfonso. Joining me today is the amazing actors from Blood and Water Season 3, or just Blood and Water in general. Uh, I'm Akimata and Anno Kriyaf. Hello, how's it going, guys? Woo-hoo. Hi, <laughs> how are you? I'm great, I'm great. How's everything on your side? How's the mood? It's November, the final leg. Come on, you take it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess. You know, it's it's been incredible. I'm so excited for the season to come out. I think everyone's been waiting for it for quite some time. And, you know, I'm really excited for everyone to see it and to share it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, so firstly, congratulations to Arno, who recently got married. Thank you very much. Thank so sorry, me. sorry, ladies and gents, he's officially hitched off the market. <laughs> I'm what sorry, is, I what's, apologize. <laughs> what's married life like, man? It's been it's been amazing. It's been yo, it's been quite a difficult couple of months because not only did we plan the the wedding, but we moved down to Cape Town as well. Um, which is like two of the most traumatic experiences of your life. Well, at least the moving. The wedding was like nice and getting married is nice. Um, but we've completely started a new life. Um, and now it's getting really exciting. It's fun. It's fun to like spend your life with your best friend and like wake up together and make coffee and like start to <laughs> all the start small to moments. Dec- yes, all the, all the small, small moments. moments. And all this small decoration stuff that all of a sudden entered my house. I mean, I used to live in, in a place with a couch. Popery. And, and it's, Popery, I think, is the legendary one that somehow Popery, gets introduced. <laughs> candles and little cactuses everywhere. Wow. But, uh, but it's amazing. It's nice. nice. <laughs> and then secondly, congratulations, Alma, for being nominated as the, at the People's Choice Awards for African Social Star Category. Ooh. Yes, thank you so well much. Done, thank man. you. <laughs> thank you. Are you excited about the nomination? How was it when you heard about it? Uh, I am excited. Um, you know, it was exciting. I was a bit like taken back because um, I guess I didn't know that like my influence or, you know, people recognize me on like social media. I don't really view myself as a influencer or social media star should I say I'm more like an actress so it was like a it was a surprise but a very welcome one you know um the people's choice award is a huge deal (laughs) and I think uh, it's more about the impact that your content has made you know it has yeah yeah Yeah. uh, content it's been impactful it's been inspiring definitely definitely but I, I was just saying that to say that um I feel that in me not trying to kind of be um, on social media like that just be myself because I think a lot of my social platforms or my social media is just me being myself nothing's really curated Mm. or I'm not really putting anything out there that's not authentic Um, I'm glad that resonates with people awesome well good luck we hope you win we're excited for you okay so can you tell us about season three like in your own words like what is it really what's really going on this season you know, I was actually just saying that I feel like season one was really about like drama, about the missing sister, and um, it was very dramatic. And um, season two, I think, was more about the students and, um, you know, everyone else's life and just finding out who, you know, the students at Parkhurst really were. And I think season three is a good mix of both worlds. You know, um, it's the drama and the students, and um, it's a lot of, I guess it's it's thrilling, it's fun. There's still an element of fun to it. And, you know, the season gets quite dangerous, as we saw in the end of season two, that, you know, Bulen was messing with some really serious people and um, she rocked the wrong boat. And I think um, in season three, we see the consequences of that in her journey. But I, in the story overall, I mean, it's, I think it's so beautiful, beautifully written in season three where everyone, we get to see everyone just go through their own journey on the mm. show. I think I have, I, it's kind of like Puleng goes digging for dirt and she ends up with gold. <laughs> That's kind of what <laughs> I she like just, that. <laughs> she just happened to like find the craziest conspiracies and unravels them. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, definitely. um, I know, right? I just, I want to get this right, right? <laughs> because I wrote it down, right? Um, you yeah. play a pansexual character, right? Which is, I got to say, really inspiring. Because I feel like in 2022, there's been this sort of liberation 
from how fluid yes. spirituality can be, right? Um, I mean, people are no longer shackled by those boundaries of those traditional relationships. And they're just realizing they can be with whoever they, you know, want to be, which is what I love yeah. about the Chris Ackerman character because he's straight true to that, you know, and shout yeah. out to the writers for doing that. And you just delivered the best performance of a pansexual character that I've ever seen or we've ever seen. Oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> so, like, um, what has been your interaction with the fans who've related and felt liberated by your character? I, I mean, it, it started out, I, I was quite nervous about it, you know, because there's there's quite a lot of responsibility on something like that where, um, you know, you owe it to the people to do it authentic, to do it in a way that's respectful as well. Um and, and luckily, the response has been amazing. You know, I get a lot of messages of people saying, it's so nice to see myself on screen, to be able to relate, to feel comfortable. You know, you're giving people the platform to, to see themselves on the show and to feel good about it. And, and what's great about the show as well is like, you'll see none of the other characters have an issue with Chris being the way he is. Everyone just accepts him as he is. Um, and, and I've always maintained like, it doesn't matter who you love as long as you love, you know, and, and, and that's the thing that, that comes out in this season as well is like, Chris is just so desperate for love. He just wants some attention and he just wants to find someone who actually cares about him. And it doesn't matter what they look like, who they are. Um, it crosses a whole bunch <laughs> of boundaries. And, and, and I think that's where we are in the world as well is like, like people aren't contained to, to a certain stereotype anymore, to a certain way that things need to be, we all just want love, man. We just want to be accepted, you know? I love it. That's beautiful. And how did you prepare for this role? Like, has it changed any perspectives while you were doing it? It has. I think I think it brings into question, you know, you you start to think about your own sexuality and and the way you fit into the world. Um, and and you start looking at things differently, you know. I'm I'm fortunate to have friends of of various different backgrounds, and you and you start to understand a bit more you get a better understanding of what it is people go through um if they don't fit into the conventional sort of straight or same-sex relationships um and and that's what you get out of it is understanding and a bit more compassion towards people and and how they live their lives wow thank you man that's amazing i'm so glad that we have this character and people can relate yeah. to it and you've had those fan interactions which is amazing I'm not from That's your been side. The how, most is it, yeah. how has it been with the okay? So sorry, uh, Amma, from your side, um, with season three and season two, um, where do you feel Huleng sort of fits in now? Now that it's been unraveled, that you know, there's that main one of the main um mysteries has you know come to bear. Yeah, um, so I think in the beginning of the season, you kind of see her. Um, I, I, what I like about the season, I think it's kind of like a redemption for Buleng. I think all along people really had this idea that she was trying to cause, you know, nonsense and was genuinely trying to mess up everyone's lives. And, you know, the season now that she, you know, found her truth, she found her sister, she kind of pulls back from everything. She gets pulled back in, obviously, because there's another mystery to unsolve and to unravel. Um, but I think overall, you just kind of see that you know, she wasn't really there to, you know, cause drama or anything. She was there to find her sister and now that has been done. She really wants to move on with her life, focus on her relationship, focus on her family. And I think in season three, we really see a lot of that. Um, but of course, you know, she's an anti-Drew. She gets pulled back in. <laughs> they need mother's help to solve Okay, so, so speaking of that, is there, what is, what mystery is being focused on in this season now? Is there like I mean, a whole there's a lot that we're gonna discuss? I mean, I don't want to give too much away. Yes, I mean, yes, there's a lot. Sports. You know, there's there's um, you know, who's Fikile's dad? You know, what happened to Mabisa? You know, there's those things that you know Fikile wants to, you know, she she wants answers to, and you know, she comes to Buleng and asks her for help. Like, yo, can you help me with this? Um, so I guess those are the two main things that um we try to investigate, and obviously that gets us into a lot of trouble, <laughs> but um. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to give too much away. <laughs> awesome. Okay. And then, Arno, can you tell us where your character starts off in the season? I think for Chris, like, he's, he's, a, he's a bit lost in this season. <laughs> um, you know, obviously, he's always had his problems with his parents not really being, being available. Um, 
And what we find now is he, he gets caught up in a bit of a, um, a longing for love as well. Oh. Um, and it, it confuses him because he, he's not really sure what to choose, where to go, what to pick. Um, he's trying to find himself. Hey, maybe he'll have I, both, you know, maybe he'll have it all. Well, I mean, he's, he's, he's been the guy who, does, yeah, who doesn't mind a bit of a tag team situation. So, <laughs> so, so, but, it, but in this season, I feel like a lot of people are dealing with like real serious, dangerous stuff. And Chris is just like in the background, like, man, I just want to, I just want to find some loving, man. I need some affection in this life, you know? Wow. And uh, sorry about that. Um, and Ama, do you think that there will be a reconciliation, you know, with Mr. Kamala and everything after everything that's happened, you know, do you think there's a, a redemption arc coming? Oh, Mr. Kumalo? Yeah, a redemption arc. You know what um, that happens. For Bulen's dad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Intense topic. I'm just saying, like, after the last season, you know, they still have to tell. I know. Me. I know. Child, oh, wait, okay. So, spoilers, uh, spoilers ahead for those that did not watch season two. The audacity you have to not watch season two. But spoilers ahead, so drop a follow and come back if you haven't watched yet. But yeah, so after the end, we, I mean, Pikile finds out, right? They, they're sitting at the dining table and they know, but they still have to, like with the dad, they still, like how is Ama's relationship going to be with him? You know, do you think there is like... Yeah. So I feel like there is a, a, a redemption for... um um Mr. Kumalo, why not Julius? Oh my gosh, his name I know. Like, I, I, I face face. Too, sorry, that's why I said Mr. Yeah, Kumalo. no, no, it's okay. Uh, for Julius, um, you know, we see that he is trying to. I think he just had this tendency to leave when things get bad. You know, he left when things were bad. We see him in Tandek in the beginning, um, with the whole adoption process. You know, he left when he got arrested. And I think um, in season three, we see him doing that, but Bulin kind of goes to her dad and, you know, kind of begs him to own up to his mistakes and to forgive himself for everything that he's done. And I think there's a lot of shame that he feels and guilt for what he has done and the pain that he's put the family through. And, um, you know, there's a beautiful scene between Bulin and her dad where they have that conversation and she's just like, just come back home. We just, we just want you around, you know, like forgive yourself. Um, but there's a lot that happens to this family in season three <laughs> that I don't want to like <laughs> give away. I don't know how like, so yeah, much is going to happen. Real. It's just six episodes, right? Am I mistaken? It's just from what I can see. It is. It's it's literally just. I don't know how they're going to put that much <laughs> trauma into one. Okay, so yeah. I just want to read yeah. some awesome stats here, right? Because I just found this when I was researching. It says Blood and Water ranks in the Netflix top 10 around the world. It has an 80% uh, approval ratings on Rotten Tomatoes with the critics and another 80% with the audience. It is in the 74th percentile for the drama genre. Okay. That's crazy. <laughs> so yeah, this show is like amazing all around the world, not just South Africa, right? Not just representing yeah. South Africa, but around the world. So how has this show impacted and changed your life? You can. Pardon, you want to take this one? <laughs> Let me take it. Yeah, I'll start. I'll start. I think, um, I mean, when we started the show, no one expected this to happen, right? We were like, yeah, let's just go shoot the show in Cape Town. And, you know, it's going to be nice. Maybe little some high people will Cape Town show. Yeah, cool. yeah, a little show and whatever. And then, and then things just completely blew up. Like, it was completely unexpected. We were just hoping to see something that actually looks good, you know, that has, like, <laughs> decent uh, production value. And that maybe like my mom will watch it and she'll send me a message. Okay, well done. But you got like on the night of the premiere, we got messages from Brazil, from Hungary, from um, Spain, from all of Africa, from America, wow. all these places. And all of a sudden you're like, you're not just on a local show anymore. This is like a massive international thing. Um, and I think everyone's like a testament to um, we, our careers have, expanded as well because of the show we've become big our profiles have lifted um and now it's to a, getting to a point where like we 
we known around the world. The show is known around the world. It's a worldwide brand now, which is amazing at, 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 in one hand, but in, on the other hand, it's like there's a lot of pressure now as well because we need to maintain it. We need to make sure that the show keeps on like, um, you know, entertaining people, capturing them. Um, and that's what I feel now with season three coming out because it's been so massive. You're like, <laughs> I hope season three is going to live up to it as well. And, and, yes. and the people are still going to enjoy it. So um, it's amazing, but it also forces you to work harder, to do more, to really, to really push a bit more. Everyone, not just the cast, but the crew as well to, to create a, 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 an international standard product. Yeah. Oh man, that's amazing. And Ama, for you, how's it impacted and changed your life? I mean, I think I don't know, basically summarized um, the whole thing, but, you know, just to echo what he has said, it definitely has expanded, you know, our careers. It's, you know, given us amazing opportunities, you know, to work with other brands. And I think to be associated with a brand like Netflix um, is such an honor, obviously. And um, yeah, and I guess it just, it's more pressure. You know, we get so excited every season um, when we get to read the script because we want to know what happens next. Like, where are we taking it this season? And I think with season three, everything just expanded in such a big way, like production, um, even how we shot certain things. I think the directors definitely, you know, took some risks and wanted to do something different and more exciting and thrilling. So I, got, I yeah. have literal goosebumps right now. I don't even, I don't, I want to see what these risks are. <laughs> they took no, it's, 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 it's crazy. It is crazy. It's my favorite season, by the way. Like, oh, season wow. three okay. that's amazing. is my favorite that's, season. That's our favorite season. Let's note that. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay, um, I, I have to say, right, I am, this has been a dream even before I started interviewing anybody, right, to interview you two guys, you two after season one of Blood and Water, and um, it's just so amazing. I think I saw Arno at the Netflix Afro, uh, Africa event, and I just had too much nervous energy. I didn't want to go introduce myself. <laughs> but yeah, it's really awesome to be, <laughs> interview you guys, man. You all are amazing. The performances on the show is just unbelievable. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. <laughs> awesome. So what is it like, speaking of Netflix, right? What is it like actually working um, on a net or filming on a Netflix production, you know, compared to the other projects that you've worked on? Uh, I'll, um, um, I'll jump in. Uh, or no, I'm on, you take it. You can take it. No, because okay. you have I'm something. Gonna take it, you have something take it. Like, Come on, just you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, go after me. Take the mic. Okay. Yeah, the let mic. me let me jump in. Yeah. So so I think the one of the biggest things I've noticed is 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 the scale, right? Is like the the amount of effort they put into the marketing to actually get the show to the right people. It's amazing to be part of a show where like there's a there's a definitive plan of like what are we actually doing? Where's the show going and how are we gonna get people to watch it? Um that I've mm -hmm. loved since the beginning. It's like the photo shoots, the marketing stuff we're doing, the interviews, it's always on a different level. And that is, I mean, that's just one part of it. Just being on the platform, being on a, on a platform that's available in what, over 190 countries, like it opens up the whole world to you. So you don't have to feel like, oh, I'm just like this little actor in South Africa, you know, doing my little show. <laughs> it, it, it empowers you. You, you yes. feel like, okay, wow, I'm actually, I'm making a show that's making a difference as well. Because a lot more people are seeing it. You have such a bigger impact on people's lives. And that's what you want to do as an actor. You want to impact people. You want to entertain people. And Netflix like gives you that opportunity to do it and to do it well. You know, It's not just like, ah, oh, yeah, let's make this quick show. And if someone sees it, great. No, it's like we're making a good show and people are going to watch it and we're going to do our best. And, and that's been, it's been empowering. That's the best way to describe quality it. Throughout. And uh, it's funny that you said uh, 190 countries. I think... That is one of the most beautiful things that Netflix has done is that it's shown the world that you can love content from every part of the world. You know, that's why yeah. things like Squid Game got so um, uh, profound around the world. That's Korean, you know, and then you have a show like Blood and Water that's from South Africa that opened everybody's eyes around the world. Like, whoa, yeah, South Africa came to the table, you know, and um, yeah. yeah, Netflix just brought that opportunity to the entire world. And I love it. 
Okay, so I was not going to talk about the Netflix production. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, I think it's it's literally, it's what Amu said. It's, it's the fact that there's a definitive plan, you know, especially with marketing, you know. That is a huge part. Of, you can make a great film, a beautiful film, but if you're not actually don't have a plan of how people are going to see it like no one's going to see it so I think that's one thing I've enjoyed and I don't think is something that's usual in South African um in in, the entertainment space you know I think marketing is kind of like an afterthought where like when we're shooting with Netflix while we're shooting we're having these conversations or people coming on set letting us know that hey this is what's happening this is what we want to do so we're always in the loop about that and um yeah Wow. Can you I think that just sums up my answer. No, no, I get it. That's that's awesome. So can you tell us or can each of you give me just three words to describe season three? I would say that season three is suspenseful. Um, there's a lot of suspense in the season. It's fun and dangerous. Oh, dangerous. Mm. Okay, cool. I know. Mm. Yeah, I, my first word was going to be dangerous as well. <laughs> it's it, it's dangerous, it's exciting, and I think it's fast-paced as well. There's like a, like you said... Oh, really? Yeah, that's that different compared to the other seasons. Real. I thought they were more slow burn. So it'd be like nice it's if this one's episodes. more... Yeah. It's six episodes, but there's there's going to be storyline coming at you at every <laughs> angle. Like, there's a no, lot... No, that's actually really true. Are we going to find out Arnold fast. has a long-lost brother or something? You know, long-lost... <laughs> <laughs> um, I reserve the right to remain silent. <laughs> the The fans, though, will um will zoom in on your facial expressions. They'll make sure they'll check if you twitched your eyebrow or something <laughs> when, when, when I ask that question. Um, yeah, I'm okay. gonna get a couple of DMs after this. Probably. <laughs> exactly. So, with this season, right? Um, or re- with regards to the show. Have you guys, like it's season three now, right? So have you guys become sort of like a family? Um, have there have they been like friendships that have like blossomed um, through the show that you 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 keep to this day, um, you know, and stay in touch? Like now that the show is only coming out now, I'm sure you wrapped up filming quite a while. Yeah. Oh, no, of course. I think family was something we built like from season one. We all just genuinely get along. You know, it's so crazy. Like you hear stories about like just how how people in the entertainment industry can be, you know, how people just don't get along and how there's feud. There's literally none of that with us. Like we all genuinely just support each other and we get along. And um, and I think a lot of that is because a lot of us are from Joburg, like a lot of the cost. So we fly down to Cape Town. And we literally just become like a family there because we're away from home. We're away from our families uh, for like a month, you know. So we really just have each other to rely on. And, you know, we live next door to each other. So, <laughs> yeah, we've definitely become like family. You know, I can't stand Arnu. I, love <laughs> I know I was watching his face the entire time. I was like, is he agreeing with you? Is he not agreeing? <laughs> Listen, no, I love gonna... Arnu. Oh, Everyone's going to say the they love me. They love me. But I know I irritate everyone. I know everyone's like in the back of the Are you the prankster? Are you the prankster on set? Are you the prankster on set? I wouldn't say the prankster, but I, I try to be the class clown, but I'm just not that funny always. So then people just get people just get kind of irritated with me. Um, but I have accepted that role. I've, I've accepted the <laughs> fact that everyone's going to roll their eyes at me. But I know deep down, like really deep down, like very far deep down into their system, they actually kind of, um, they kind of like me. And I'm happy with that. Wow. That's a win on my side. I know you're the funniest, funniest person on set. What do you mean? <laughs> He's just trying to be like, you I don't know what to do this a thing yearbook you where everybody writes, you know, most uh, uh, class clown. What's the other categories? Best couple. 
those can that, Mr. Like the most likely to fall asleep on set. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, those <laughs> ones exactly. But That's Arnie is like things. the funniest person ever. <laughs> Literally, he he's the guy who like comes on set and just lifts our spirits. Like in terms, he'll just make a joke and I'm just like what? Because it's so <laughs> random. But he's like we we've, we've accepted you, Arnie. We love you as weird Thank as you, you are. Oh, Listen, the thing <laughs> is, the thing is, most of the time there's like. There's a lot of heavy stuff happening on set, right? And especially with the other characters, and like everyone's so focused, and it gets very serious. And then when I rock up, it's just like, okay, but let me just break the tension a little bit. Let me just relieve yeah. everyone of some pressure. Yeah, that's yeah, the benefit. Same, the of scenes are so dramatic. Bread. You need that lightheartedness afterwards, you know. Yeah. So I'm glad that you bring that to everybody, man. That's what I bring. That's what they pay me for. They don't pay me for my acting ability. They pay me for it's in your for contract. It's in your yeah. contract, class cloud in the contract. Yeah, make make someone laugh every day, and you'll get your money at the end. That sounds exactly <laughs> like Netflix. That sounds like the entire message that Netflix sends out. <laughs> They are hot. <laughs> Thank you so much, you two. It has been amazing. Thank you. I'm truly honored and humble. Thank you so this. much. You all are just yeah, such amazing people, man. I'm so amazed. <laughs> I have oh, nothing. It's just amazing. Hey, um, but yeah, you thank you so much. A, you Sorry, should yeah. see us on a Saturday night. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the rap, the no, the rap party. You'll have a rap party. The the premiere party or watch what what is the launch party? Yeah, the launch party. There we go. That's the launch party night for you guys. <laughs> yeah. When everybody. Yeah, you'll see how cool you are there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. Let's wrap up. <clears throat> Thank you so much to the amazing actors Anok Riff and Ama Kamata who joined us today to talk about Blood and Water season three that's coming out on the 25th of November. Don't forget, join the Watch Club, the Netflix Watch Club. Find us on Twitter and the links are in our bio. And yeah, just thank you from the bottom of my heart to you guys for joining me today. And I wish you everything <laughs> of the best for your future careers too. Thank you, thank so, you much. so much. Thanks for having us. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Have a great day. You, you too. too. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Heidi. Thanks, Chloe. Bye, Have Adam. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Have a good day. Bye-bye.